So when working with an ASP.NET application in Mono, developing and testing it actually isn't too bad. Mono comes with a built-in web server called XSP4, and it's built into Mono Develop, which is actually pretty convenient. You can even set it up for SSL and some other stuff. However, the issue is that XSP is totally not production ready. In fact, the official Mono documentation specifically says to not use XSP in production. Other options include hosting it through Apache and, of course, the wonderful Nginx. The problem is, in order for the ASP.NET application to be hosted on Nginx, you have to be using something called FastCGI. Luckily, Mono comes with an implementation of FastCGI. The problem is that it's no good. So the community has come up with their own version of fast CGI called Hyperfast CGI, and one of the key features is that it does not leak memory. That's not a good sign. Yet another option, and the topic of this video, is self-hosting, or running service stack as a daemon. Now, if your web application is relatively simple, and your backend is written in C Sharp, and the frontend is pretty much JavaScript with a very RESTful API, you can get away with just running service stack as a daemon. So a huge benefit to this is that you cut ASP.NET out of the equation completely. So this global CS file is pretty standard for an ASP.NET application. We inherit from HTTP application and app host base. From there, everything's pretty standard for a service stack application. We've got our routes, we've got our services, and everything else we need to work with a very simple service. And when we call the hello endpoint, we'll get our result, hello eg. So this is all running within XSP4, which again is built into Mono and is running through Mono Develop. So let's go ahead and compare this file with the self-hosted version of Service Stack. So on the left, we have the self-hosted version, and on the right, we have the ASP.NET version. So you can see that the self-hosted version is a little bit longer, and that's due to the addition of this function. So the self-hosted solution is effectively a console project because it will be run as a Linux daemon, which is very similar to a Windows service, and you can actually run Service Stack as a Windows service. It's important to note that since we're pulling in Unix specific libraries, making Service Stack self-hosted on Linux will make it so that it won't run at all on Windows. Now there's different ways that you can make your application platform aware, or at the very least know that if it runs on Windows, it needs to follow a certain execution path versus on Linux, but that's not what we're doing here. You can see that in general, the code is very similar. The top level class on the ASP.NET side is completely gone because we don't need an HTTP application. Instead of inheriting from app host space, we're inheriting from app self host space because this is self hosted. And the app host init is moved from the top level class into this new main method. If you're familiar with Linux daemons, the main method does exactly what you would expect. You've got your Unix signals, and then you've got the logic here that waits for some sort of signal to terminate. So I'm going to go ahead and leave the ASP.NET application running because we're running on a different port with the daemon. And we're going to go ahead and run the daemon this way. And that way, when we go back to our browser, we can see this is the daemon example. And of course the endpoints will work the exact same. And there you have it. Now obviously you don't want to expose your services running a self-hosted service stack because you can't do stuff like SSL, DDoS protection, and things like that. You still need some sort of web server up front, which is fine because that's really easy to do with Nginx. Now we're not gonna do it here, but the Nginx configuration is pretty much as simple as this. Now ideally you would secure your server using SSL, and set up Nginx to route your traffic to your service stack API. Pretty much exactly how it shows in this example here. And that's pretty much all there is to setting up a self-hosted service stack on Linux. Let me know what you thought in the comments, and thanks for watching.